Ghana'nın en önemli iş adamlarından biriyle tanışacağım. Herkese Gana'dan, Akra'dan selamlar. Arkamda bir kaplan dolaşıyor, diğeri de arkada oturuyor. Neden derseniz hepsini anlatacağım. Şu anda Gana'nın en önemli iş adamlarından biriyle tanışacağım ve bunun için çok mutluyum gerçekten. Beni kabul ettiği için ve bu videoyu yapmamıza izin verdiği için. Bu kaplanlar onun kaplanları. Hemen önce ismini paylaşmak istiyorum. Biz onu Freedom Jacob Cesar olarak tanıyoruz. Hemen buraya Instagram'ını ekliyorum. İncelemenizi şiddetle tavsiye ediyorum. Freedom sadece bir iş adamı değil, aynı zamanda büyük bir yardımsever. Bir yardımsever, bir yardım kuruluşu var ve birçok şekilde insanlara yardım ediyor, Afrika'ya yardım ediyor. Gerçekten ben onunla tanışacağımı öğrendiğimde hayat hikayesini hemen okudum ve bu kadarını beklemiyordum gerçekten. Sadece bir kaplanlarla yola çıkmıştık ama arkasında koca bir dünyayı barındıran bir adamla tanışma fırsatım elde ettim. Çok minnettarım ona. Beni kabul ettiği için. Ve Freedom'ın çok önemli de bir özelliği var bizim için, Türkiye için. Çok koca yürekli adam dedim ya. Hatay depreminde çok kısa süre önce olan bu büyük Hatay depreminde 10 şehrimizi içine alan bu depremde hemen koştu, geldi, Hatay'a gitti ve maddi manevi yardımlarını esirgemedi. Yani düşünsenize Afrika'dan büyük bir deprem olduğunu Türkiye'de duyuyor ve kalkıyor, gidiyor. Hem oraya maddi yardım yardım götürüyor. Hem de kendi gidiyor. Bizzat ve insanlarla tanışıyor. insanlara yardım götürüyor. Yani koca yürekli adam dememin sebebi işte bunlardan biri. Bu güzellikler onun kaplanları ve bunu kaplanlar neden burada? Neden kaplan besliyor? Neden buradalar? Şimdi ona soracağız ve anlatacak. Hepsinin bir nedeni var tabi. Ve çok ufakta hikayesini dinleyeceğiz. Bu koca yürekli adamın. O zaman hadi gelin gidelim. Evet, şöyle bir sofrayla karşılaştık biz. <gülüyor> yeah, yeah, everybody can help yourself. She's obviously going to be interviewing, so she's not eating. But after you can serve her, that's for me and my friend will start eating. And we can do the interview, it's fine. Yeah, okay. If you don't mind. Okay. Will you comfortable with the eating? And... Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Okay, nice. Okay. What you are eating? Um, it's basically garden herbs with yam. Yam, yam. Is, yam is a family of potato. Yeah, I love yam, by the way. Oh, okay. With a, the with a sauce, something like this, right? Yes, is so a... the garden egg sauce is... Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just like African food. You know, African food is very raw. I think a little bit strong as Turkish food because, you know, you can tell from the energy. energy. The level of energy, yes. Mm. Yeah. Did you try Turkish food? Mm. Of course you mm -hmm. My favorite is the kebab. Um, kebab. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now I've been. Um, yeah. um, before I went to Hatay, was this? Was the city that everybody was staying? Um, before you go to Hatay, you take the plane there. Mm. Uh, no, Adana. Adana. Um, yes, Adana. Oh, Adana kebab is the best in. Yeah, Turkey. I was having the best kebab in Adana, and <laughs> I, I really enjoy. I still remember the taste. Oh, I am happy for enjoy enjoying. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for invite us uh, lunch. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry again, yeah. I'm so tight with myself, but uh, I'm yeah. sure we can do this. Yeah, no, no problem for me. Okay, it's starting now. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you, first right, of right. all. <laughs> I explain uh, with my people who you are. I read about you, who you are. But I want to ask you, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people believe in presenting yourselves as who they are. If I ask you who you are, you either need to think about, oh, I'm a prince, <laughs> or I'm a princess, <laughs> or I'm a president's daughter. <laughs> you know, what if you don't have all of those things? 
that does that make you nobody no so i don't really think life is about who you are life is about who you're becoming mm. so you know i think i'm becoming something that the world haven't seen in many centuries mm. okay hence that's why you're asking me the question who are you <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i'm just becoming something that mm. you know i probably didn't think i would become what i am today and that's just how life is you know if you let life lead you you let life be in charge mm -hmm. life be in control and you live it it's beautiful yeah, you never know nice. what you can become yeah you always follow your heart i think it's not just not just my my heart but my heart my mind my soul together in the world in the world i uh, follow it nice. just like you you're following the world right yeah your I... heart has brought you to africa yeah and your mind is taking you to places and yeah. your soul is Keeping it strong. Yeah, it's of fair. course. <laughs> I can call you is freedom. I think, freedom right? is fine. Yes, okay. Did you know before that you will be billionaire or something, or you plan? You made a plan already, or just happening? Mm. Happened. I don't think nobody know what they can become tomorrow. Yeah. You know, you can be the best athlete, the best footballer, and tomorrow you get hurt on the pitch and you become a story writer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. an author or become an actor so i didn't think so but i've always been very wealthy inside when i was very poor with my mother i've always felt rich inside oh really yeah nice. yeah i don't think riches is just money you know i felt like i had something that you know Wow. People didn't have. Yeah. Do you believe that if you think something, a universe will come give you, or God will give you? Mm. Do you believe that? Mm. Because you told you told me we were poor, but I feel always that I am rich. Yeah. I mean, it's not just the belief that will, the universe will make it, or the universe will make it come to you. I think you need to be prepared. Of course. You need to take the chances. Yeah. You need to work towards what you're thinking of, and you need to be active. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody think. Everybody think that they can become this. They can become that. They be, you know, there are billion kids that wants to be footballers. <laughs> it's only a couple. Yeah. You know, maybe thousand out of the billion become footballers. Yeah. Which is less than one percent. Yeah. So it's how you prepare yourself and the chances you take, and of course how dedicated and active you are That's yeah of course of course exactly some people thinking always negative ah i'm poor is we don't have nothing something like that but you told me yeah we were poor but i i feel it's i'm a rich because not only for money something yeah yeah it's the difference between me positive and positive thing yes that positive thinking the difference between me and that person yeah that person is meant to be like that person i'm meant to be like me yeah <laughs> so it's uh, just a simple difference yeah you know yeah and some people are gonna be like that you don't have to bother to change them yeah if you can't if they're good at what you want to use them for employ them yeah. <laughs> or hire them yeah. if you can't do that too they need help from you you can give them give them yeah <laughs> simple life is beautiful yeah life is beautiful nice <laughs> how did you be billionaire it's the, what is the first things what did you do before i think you just need to respect money people don't respect money oh. and people don't respect human beings these oh. two things is what makes the world go round is the money and the human beings Hmm. Okay, the human beings are looking for the money. The money is running away from the human <laughs> yeah. beings. You have to chase them. When you find it, if you have to chase anything and you catch it, you have to hold it properly, right? Yeah. Because if you don't, you'll run again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the people are not doing that. Yeah, yeah. So you have to take care of money and you have to respect human beings mm. that they need the money. Mm. So you should be able to share the money proportionally so everybody can get little pieces. That they'll be doing something for you so if you have one million people all trying to do something for you yeah you will definitely become rich yeah you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right so it's how you can share it maybe you can start sharing for five people mm. then it becomes 10 then it becomes 50 then oh. it becomes 100 but don't run away from sharing the money yeah. a lot of people are running away they want to keep the money for themselves yeah but you know mm. you have to share the money proportionally that is what I see as respect for money. Mm. And this is respect money. Yes, oh. you're giving it to the right people 
and they also take care of their wife, their children, their families. Okay, mm -hmm. and in return, they give you their time. You're building a house or you're building a business. You know, you have to be fair, and uh, it goes like this, mm -hmm. and it doesn't stop. The day you stop sharing the money and paying the people, within a month, a year, everything goes away. It will start running from you again. <laughs> <laughs> Did I answer you right? <laughs> yes. Good. Nice, nice. I like it. <laughs> good. Um, I know your English is good. It's, yeah. It's, I'm... <laughs> but you know, um, you're Turkish. I'm an African, and yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't normally grant people to, for to interview me. No. Uh, once in a while, but I think for you to come to Africa and trying to get content together and trying to convince your people in, in Turkey and letting them know that you're a traveler yeah. and you're sharing information from great people, poor people, whatever people. Yeah. That's why I decided to do really, this. Really, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And you're also, welcome. I wanted to interview with you because your soul, when I read something about you and your soul is, yeah, I can say beautiful. Yeah, this is what I want also. When I came to Africa first time, I saw different things, you know, it's because everybody show us different. Africa is poor, Africa is nothing, they don't have water or something. And when I came here, I saw so many things. Is That's why I want to show them. I start to show them Africa. Yeah, this is Africa, but also this is Africa. Mm. Yeah, I love to do it. And also after me, so many people thought, wow, this is Africa? Are we told there is no water? We thought they are always poor. Oh, this is Africa something. I, I'm happy for that. And that's why also you went to Turkey. And when I saw this, wow, I'm so impressed with it. Why did you go to Turkey? He went to Turkey for Hatay earthquake for help with them. But I'm, I wonder why you went to their Turkey, my country. I know you love to help some people, but you are a businessman and you are very busy. Your schedule is so tight, something. And you create time and you went to Turkey and had them, you, not send the money. Not you didn't send money, send stuff. You went to there. Yeah, that's why I want to ask why. So first of all, I had like a business meeting mm -hmm. in Turkey. And the day before I was going, the earthquake happened. Oh. I, everybody in my family and around say, oh, you can't go to Turkey. Because um, it's on TV, there's a big earthquake everywhere, the people are dying. So I said to myself, if I don't go, it means that, you know, um, it's the earthquake that's stopping me and two people I'm gonna go and meet for to discuss the business also, they're gonna think that, oh, I don't need Turkey anymore because of what has happened. So I decided to go. And when I got there, I was watching television, mm. you know, in the hotel. Yeah. And... Um, you were in Istanbul, I think. Yes. Yeah. And so I said, no, I have to do something that, you know, maybe uh, Africans might not be able to be here to do it not the president, not the countries, maybe I can do it to represent them. So I tried to buy the tents in Turkey and they said there's no tent. Yeah. And then yeah. I tried from China and there was no tent. Yeah. So I, I bought the tent from my warehouse in, oh, in, Ghana, in Ghana and oh. flew it. Oh. Flew the tents to Istanbul and then I drove to Adana and from Adana to Hatay and to seven more cities in Turkey. Seven. Yes, all the, oh, all you, the places had earthquake. Every, oh. Yeah, everywhere I left. Oh. The, the next time, the next hour, there was another earthquake. Oh, yes. you visit? Yeah. Ah, okay. And so it was a great experience for me. I learned a lot, you know, and there was one woman that really touched my heart when I was giving food and water and money to some people. And she just cried and I cried, oh. you know, because you know, her time, her time had changed. She couldn't, she didn't know how she was going to get back what she's lost. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah, you know? it's too and, much. Yeah. And I just think that, you know, the world is, it's one world. Yeah. Yeah. We just live in different countries, but we all have the same issues. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If there can be the storm in Africa, 
they can be earthquake in America, they can be in Turkey, yeah. they can be tsunami here. But if you're around that you can help, yeah. then you help. You know, I think human beings are the same. So it's not like I picked Turkey over Africa. A lot of people in Africa also need help. And I do yeah. help people in Africa. But I certainly believe that at that point of time, Turkey needed the world. And I happen to be one of the people that could help. And I'm happy that God put me in a position to be able to do that. Thank, thank you for that. I'm so glad uh, you. in my person. Is the, how, how many tents you... Thousand. Uh, thousand tents. Wow. It's, uh, and you just uh, get from Ghana and to there is... Uh, so is, uh, I was already building ten cities. I did one in America. I was going to do one in Japan, in Tokyo, mm. you know, and I was using that to close the deficits of homeless people. Oh. And so the turkey thing just came up and I was uh, there and I already had stock of uh, tents. Okay. Because New Africa Foundation, which is my foundation, um, was supplying over 10,000 tents around the world, wow. which we were decided to do. And so Turkey at that time needed that. And it wasn't only the tent. I brought the tent. I brought heaters. I brought bed inside the tent. Mm. I brought shower to oh. go with it, you know, and um, got some clothes and some blankets, you know, for mm. the people. Yeah, and so it, it was it's cold. Yeah, and time. some food and some toys and, you know, mm. um, the kids were happy. I had some friends yeah. there. I met some young kids when they were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw your video. Also, I will take his YouTube channel and Instagram. You should watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thank so. you. Thank you for that. I'm so appreciate yeah, thank for you. my country. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to ask you something more. You have had tigers, right? Why you have a tiger? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he has a tigers, two tigers or more? Yeah, two. two tigers. And I saw your some photo. You have a line also, the yeah. big line something. Yeah. Uh, why? <laughs> well, you know, one of the first things that I wanted in this world was a bicycle. And when I got a bicycle, I gave it away. Mm. And, okay. And then I grew up to have all the cars all the things I want for myself in this world. I don't even know how, but I was just becoming successful and successful. But for me to buy the tigers, you know, I bid it for the tigers from two countries, South Africa and Dubai. And I couldn't find tigers anywhere else except for these two places or in Asia or Miami. So I wanted to just own two tigers and breed them in Africa, this part of Africa, West Africa, East Africa, North Africa and Central Africa, there's, there are no tigers. Oh. And they say because of our weather, oh. we can't have the tigers. Mm. But I believe that we could because, you know, uh, people have also come to our country and find gold and diamonds and they can use it anywhere yeah. in the world. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I wanted to give the tigers a chance to breed them. So I got them from when they were babies. I started feeding them with milk, chicken, mm. meat, mm. you know, and started getting to know them and my trainer and we realized that you know they're just like humans they're wild but they're like humans they listen they sit my trainer goes in a cage every day oh. and um, we breeded them and we, we we sort of took care of them and now they they're grown they're one year four two months years, I think. No, and, under two years oh. they're like one year four months or one year six months oh, okay. you need over two years before they can breed have a child so okay. I want to be one of the first people that, mm. you know, would be able to breed a tiger and use that to create a zoo for the nation and expand the zoo to a bigger park, mm. a safari park. Safari park. Yeah, yeah, and then slowly introduce that as a tourism uh, in my country. Yeah. You know, starting with those two animals because they're rare. Mm -hmm. One of them is white, all white. The other one is black and white. I saw them, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so, yeah, so it's hard to. But you know, my main business is real estate. I develop cities, I develop hotels, I develop, mm -hmm. you know, big buildings. One of the things I wanted to do is industrial and national development. So the national is the zoo, a museum, mm -hmm. you know, water park. Mm -hmm market mm. so you know the tigers have started 
mm. my journey in that area mm. to be able to mm. develop my monumental developments and all of that and okay. I'm happy. Yeah, nice, nice. <laughs> Zoo is gonna be is an open park, right? They yeah. Uh, yeah. they will run. Yeah, they yeah, will, they, they will. They, they have will a, free. They will have a big space yeah. in the zoo. They run. They go up and down. They have a swimming pool. Oh. You know, they oh. swim. They feed them. You know, yeah. um, or other alternative is to leave them in the safari. But then they have to go and look for their own meat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, uh, their own food. <laughs> and I don't know if this part of Africa is ready for that yet. My country, I don't know. You know, but. Uh, you mean zoo? No. no, there's the zoo and there is the safari park. Hmm. The safari park, you have to leave them. Yeah. And they. If they don't have their food and they find a human. The human is the food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In Kenya, I think in Kenya and Tanzania is a, some national park. They do some Yeah, they, they do that, maybe. but they don't have tigers. They have lions. Yeah, lions. Yeah, yeah, they don't yeah. have tigers. By far, it's only myself that have these tigers in this part mm -hmm. of Africa. And in case you don't know, you're talking to the Prince of Africa. I know some of the people were like wondering what kind of prince is this? Where is he from? Ghana prince or this? That? No, no, no. Let me readdress you and reintroduce myself to you. I go by the name Freedom Jacob Caesar or Sajifubidia. I am the prince, the prince of the continent. One continent, Africa, I have only one prince, and that's me. And. I have two good friends who are the tigers. They're called Kunte and Kinte. Kunta Kinte. Now, Africa, everything is possible. It's just like where you're from. And we're not a poor continent. We're very rich. We're very resourceful. We have everything. I know. We have human resources. We have natural resources. We have capacity. We have the ability. Yeah. We just haven't had great leadership. And this leadership is about to start. Remember this. Where you heard it from. The Prince of Africa have arrived. <laughs> and it's by the might and it's by the universe that I'm doing what I'm doing. So I want to wish Turkey very well, yourself. Thank you very much for your time and um, having this interview with me. Um, I wish Turkey the best and I want them to recover. Thank you so much uh, you. for your time. Meet me. <laughs> I'm so happy. Sure. Uh, yeah, mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your stay. <laughs> <laughs>